So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use MidJourney, and I'm going to teach you just how simple and easy it is to use. Anybody can do it. And I want to start by just talking about, first of all, just how to get in the door. You go to midjourney.com, and when you uh, uh, go to the website, it doesn't matter what kind of device you're using. You can use your phone, you can use a tablet, you can use an old computer or a new computer. That makes no difference in the quality of the images that you create. Now, it is easier to access MidJourney uh, on a uh, desktop or on your computer as opposed to um, your phone, just because it's a bigger interface and it's easier to kind of, uh, you know, move around and, and do what you need to do. So when you go to midjourney.com, you'll see over on the left, you have an explore tab, a create tab, organized. Now the main one that you're gonna be using is the create tab. And that's really, really the only one you really need to know about. The explore tab is a great place to see other, what other people are doing. And it's also a great place to get ideas for what your prompt's gonna be. So in other words, you can go in the explore tab and just scroll through all these images. And if you see something that interests you, even maybe it's just the style of the image, but then you can go up and you can actually copy this prompt and then modify it and make it your own. So uh, it's a great place to get uh, really good ideas. Now, uh, one of the things you'll notice when you're looking at all these prompts is it actually isn't so important that you know exactly how to do your prompting. Um, the, the real uh, way you get great images on Midjourney is not by being a master of prompting, although it's good to know some basic things about how to prompt and I'm gonna teach you that, but, it, but you do not have to go real deep and you don't have to become a master professional prompter in order to create great images. But if you go and you look on the, on the explore uh, page over here on the left, if you click on explore and you look at all these images people are creating, you'll quickly see that they'll find all kinds of beautiful, incredible images that just have a very simple prompt. Um, so that's really what it's all about. It's about creating a lot of images and, um, and then choosing your very favorite ones. And that's how I do it. So let's go through the real basic uh, interface here over here on the left. If we go to the, the create tab, and this is going to be the main tab that you go to, um, in order to create some Im images, I think uh, Midjourney allows you to create, um, I think you always have to create some account. So you have to create an account and that'll, you do that down here in the very bottom left. Um, and once you create an account, you can choose, uh, you know, I think you can generate a few uh, images uh, just to try it out, but it's very limited and definitely you're going to need to uh, pay for some sort of subscription if you want to do create great images. And that's because you need to create a lot. You can't just create, you know, 10 and hope for something great. You've got to create, you know, 50 or 100 or whatever it is and slowly I even change the image and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. So now let's go to the create page. Again, you click over here on the left on create. The basic thing to understand is the closer the word is to the front of the, of the prompt, the more weight it has. But keeping that in mind, um, you can really write gibberish. You don't even have to have it be a grammatically uh, correct sentence. You can just write a bunch of words. Um, but not only should you describe the thing, but describe all the parts of the thing. You can actually make your prompt a paragraph long, but the real secret to doing your prompt is put all the words you want in there. You can even just, you know, copy and paste a paragraph from a book if you want. Go find your favorite book if you can't think of a good prompt and just put that in there. But it's all about discovery, right? So you, what you're doing is you're going to create all these images and then you're going to see, see one that you like. And, uh, and that might even inspire you. And so once you see one that you like, and if you're not getting good images, then you know, modify your prompt a little bit. Remove words, add words, you know, put, put them closer to the front or closer to the end, whatever. But just play with your prompt. But what I've discovered is I can work on these prompt and I might think I have a, a good prompt and then it just kind of doesn't generate very interesting images. So I go and I change a few words and then all of a sudden it's just popping out all these great images. Um, but uh, for the most part, what you really want to do is you want to create a lot of images, you want to pick one that you like, and then you want to modify that image. Okay, so let's try to create our first image here. And I've typed in this prompt, and as you can see, I like to use commas, but basically other than that, there's nothing else that I put into that prompt at all other than just typing what I want. And as you can see, these are the results that I get. And the vast majority of these images 
are not great quality images. If I click on one, I can then use my scroll wheel to go through each one of these images. So first of all, most of these are not even photorealistic. They're more stylized like a drawing or an illustration. Um, and you may want it to be more like a uh, photograph. So let's just retype that prompt, but this time we'll put Nikon photograph at the very beginning. So let's see what we get. And so it's created these four images, as you can see, are more photographic. Now it's not always perfect in obeying the prompt at all, but it's generally making these more photographic. Now if I want to rerun this job, I simply hover over here on the right and you'll see a rerun button and that will rerun that prompt with all the settings exactly as they were before. Now when we type in a prompt up here, um, you have the option to go in and adjust all these settings. Uh, most of these are self-explanatory, but basically um, this is where I have it on stealth mode and you will not be able to turn that on unless you have one of the higher tier accounts. You can turn on personalize, which we'll talk about later. Uh, this is where you choose the version and I always use the latest one, although you can try out some of the others. Um, standard and raw mode. I always leave mine in standard mode. And then up here, this is going to be your aspect ratio. So if we slide it to the right, as you can see, it gives you a different shaped image. So if you want a tall vertical, you go all the way to the left. And if you want a thin horizontal, you go to the right. Okay, so now let's go back in and see what we've got with that. We've rerun that job four times, and now we have all these new images. And as you can see, most of these look like photographs now because I put an icon photograph at the front. But the other thing to notice is the huge variety in images. And that's one of the real nice things about Midjourney is it does create a crazy amount of variety in the images that it gives you. Whereas some of the other text-to-image services uh, will not create this sort of variety. But this is what you want to do is you want to create a whole bunch of images and I'll just come over here and just rerun this job a whole bunch of times. I usually do four at a time, which gives me 16 images. And then I'm going to go through all of those images until I find something great. And that's the real key to creating great images with Midjourney. So nothing special about my prompt, but I've created a lot of images. And as you can see, most of them are not that great. This one's blown out, overexposed. This one's just a not a great composition. This one is a black and white image with just a red caboose that has steam coming out of it for some reason, but that's typical of AI to do all these odd things. For instance, here you have a train and it's creating a wake in the water like a boat, but we're just going to ignore all of these wrong images until we find one that's interesting, and that's the real key to getting great images in Midjourney. Now, let's find one that we like but that we want to change something about. So I'm going to go down and I might like uh, this one here, but I might decide that this extra track just doesn't work. So I'm going to come down and we're going to go to the editor. And before we get to the editor, let me quickly mention, if I click on subtle, it's going to give me four subtle variations on this image, meaning not that different, but a little bit different. If I click on Strong, Vary, that's going to create four images that are quite a bit different than the original. But the one thing that we're going to use a lot of is the editor down here. And this gives us all these tools to work with. For instance, I can move the image left or right, and if I moved it over here, it will regenerate to fill in this empty space with something new. And I can move it anywhere I want. The other thing I can do is I can zoom in or out. So I can go like this, and now it'll fill in all this extra area around the outside. The other thing I can do, and this is one of the real big ones, is I can click on Erase over here, 
and I can erase whatever I don't like. So if we don't like this second track over here, we'll just erase it. And I don't have to be too careful because it'll just regenerate every bit of that. So maybe I'll make my brush a little smaller and then just go in here and get rid of all of this extra track. And now it'll regenerate the image. And if there's anything else I don't like, I'll go ahead and you know highlight that as well. But I can basically hit submit and now it'll regenerate that image. And I, and I usually do that like three or four times um, just to get you know, more options. So we'll close this and this will take us back to our create page. And as you can see, it's now filling in these new images and regenerating the part that I wiped out. And this is a tool you will use all the time because you'll have an image that's great but there's one part of it you don't like, and so you can redo that um, until you get something you're happy with, like this is much more realistic here. But it gives me all these options, and it's sometimes it'll put in these odd artifacts, but I can just go in again into my editor, just get rid of that part of it, and then maybe I don't like this or this, and hit submit and regenerate that part. Now once I've settled on an image that I'm happy with, I can simply I can simply click on that image and then just click right here and it'll download it and you can save it wherever you want. There's also an upscale uh, feature which will turn your image into a higher resolution image and it will also change it ever so slightly. Um, if you choose Subtle, it will try to change it little, and if you choose creative, you will give it permission to change it quite a bit. So we've created two different jobs, and now we can go and look at this job, and this is just a single image. So here is the more creative upscale, and if you look carefully, it's changed some of the details and some of the textures and things, and you might actually like it more than the original, so you might want to try that out as well. So if you go down here to this Organize, it'll show you every image you've ever created and you can filter it and it's pretty self-explanatory. You can just try clicking on different things to get different layouts. So one of the most powerful things that you can do with Midjourney, and this is just unbelievable really, is that you can use uh, Midjourney or text to image generation as an aid if you're designing anything. So in other words, if you want to do an interior design for a living room, and I happen to like Frank Lloyd Wright, so I type in a, a prompt that says to you know design a living room or show me a living room designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, and then it'll spit out all these ideas. And I can go through all of them and find some really interesting ideas if I'm trying to design a living room. Um, another thing you could do is birthday cake. You know, birthday cake for a five-year-old boy or whatever it is. You can decide how you want to paint your nails before you get your nails done. Um, you can design just about anything in the world, a, a new toaster. You could even use it to uh, help you design uh, your table uh, settings for uh, your Christmas party or whatever it is. Um, but you can use uh, AI to give you all these great ideas. Um, I personally am an artist, so I use AI to create source images that I can use to then create paintings with. And it's through this uh, creating all these images that you discover things and that you find all kinds of ideas that you would have never thought of. And so you can imagine if you were to hire, for instance, an interior decorator and you said, hey, give me some ideas for how I might want to design my living room. And that would take them, even if they were using computer graphics and using all the latest software, that would be a full day or even like a week long job to try to figure out how to design your uh, living room. Um, but on the other hand, uh, on mid-journey, you can just hit rerun and you get four new examples uh, every, you know, however many seconds. And you can create all these uh, uh, images that give you ideas. Um, and you can borrow from one or, you know, take an idea from one image or, you know, combine it with an image, uh, with an idea from another image. But you can do all of this stuff and this ability to design things and to, you know, look at things before you build them is just unbelievable and it's one of the greatest things that you can do in Midjourney. For instance, if you want to do a logo for your business or for yourself or for, for anything, you could even use Midjourney to, to look at hairstyles before you go to the, the salon to, so you can show them you know, what you want your hair to look like. 
But anything at all that you want to design using Midjourney is just a fabulous way to do that. Okay, let me show you some other things that we can do um, with uh, when we're creating images, some more advanced things. So first of all, let's go into these settings. And if you want to turn on personalize, you have to rank a number of images in order to create your own personal style. Um, so you won't be able to turn that on until you do that. And the way you do that is to go into personalize here. And this is uh, create, organize where your library is, and then personalize. And then just follow the instructions about how to uh, start teaching Midjourney what you like. Um, I've gone through this uh, program myself and I didn't find that it really helped me very much in terms of the types of images that I create, but there are a lot of people that really like this personalization. Um, now if you come to this next chat, this is where the chat is and you can uh, see what other people are doing, see what their prompts are, and chat with other people about you know the images that you're creating. And then the last one is this task where you can rank images and you earn fast hours and do different surveys and etc. Now let's go back to the um, create tab and I just want to show you another way that you can personalize your images. If you click here and this is in the prompt field where we enter our prompts and if you click on this little icon you will have the option to upload images. Now I've already uploaded this image here and I'll click on it and now it'll put that in the prompt field and I have three options with that. And if, you, if I go here and click on the person it will create uh, people that look like this person. So in other words it, try, it will attempt to give you a likeness of this person in whatever images you create. The second one is just to simply use it as a style reference, meaning like the colors and the style of the photo, but not necessarily the person. Although sometimes it will generate images that are similar. And then this uh, default one selection is just to use it as part of the prompt to get some basic style uh, references from the image. And that one doesn't seem to work very well for me either. But the, this one here, which is the one I've used uh, quite a bit, will create an image that looks like this person's. So if I type in woman standing in front of a car in a field in the morning light, um, that person should look like this person. So let's see what we've got. Now it's going to generate these images and I could rerun this three more times. So we have 16 total images to look at. So now you can see we have all these images that look like that same person. Now if you're trying to do this with somebody that you know, you'll quickly realize that none of or very few of the images are a perfect likeness. Um, you might have to generate like 40 images to get one that's, you know, where a true likeness. But it works pretty good. There's another thing that down here in the bottom we have night mode and light mode and I much prefer the dark mode so you might want to uh, setting that to dark mode. And down here is all your account uh, preferences. So here are your basic plans and this is subject to change. This may not be the same when you check it out but uh, if you just get even the $30 a month uh, plan you can do um, uh, unlimited relaxed generation. So basically um, it sort of generates the images a little bit slower but you can have unlimited which is great. Um, now, the $60 plan allows you to have uh, stealth generations, uh, meaning nobody else can see any of the images that you create. And if you don't have that, then your images can end up on a forum or wherever. There's so a couple other things I want to say about Midjourney uh, that people might have questions about. Number one is who owns the copyright to these images that you, you create? And there's uh, not any certainty in the law about that at this time. But for the most part, um, you know, it's going to be whatever images that you create, you definitely can use those images any way you want to use those images. Um, they're definitely, you can use them. Now, whether or not you own the copyright, that's all actually uh, being decided in the law right now. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you guys uh, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.